Hey guys, it's Jesse from the Beardy and the Baldy channel bringing you my first weekly uh, update of my subscription at my local comic shop. So I'm going to run through the comics I got this week and just have a quick rundown of what I liked about them or not. Uh, so maybe it's some things that maybe you haven't tried or didn't know were coming out. So just going to do, going to do that. So here it is. Um, first up, this week's issue of The Mighty Thor. It's issue number six. Uh, it's a cool story. It, um, it picks up continuing on the, the the current adventures and everything. What's been going on with uh, Loki and Laufey and all the different uh, the bad guys of the Thor universe coming together. Um, but then it goes into this backstory uh, for Loki. So it feels a little more uh, classic Viking via the the viewpoint of Marvel universe. Um, so yeah, it's 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 a cool issue. Uh, the art shifts during the flashback, so it's kind of cool. But it was kind of uh, even though I really liked the issue, it was kind of a letdown from last month's when we had that great uh, teaser at the end of the issue and not seeing anything with that this month was kind of a, a little bit disappointing. So, yeah. Uh, up next, continuing in the vein of the uh, Thor universe, um, Enchantress shows up in the Totally Awesome Hulk. Uh, seems like the women of the Marvel Universe um, it can't get enough of Totally Awesome Hulk, uh, Amadeus Cho. Uh, the poor kid, um, still new to his powers and everything, and this is the second powerful female figure in the Marvel Universe that's trying to come collect him uh, to be part of uh, their world, uh, albeit for different reasons this time. So uh, it's a good issue, a uh, different artist on the issue, but uh, keeps up the great vibe and feeling that's been going on with Frank Cho and his work uh, in the first four issues, so um, another great one there. And uh, yeah, next up. Aquaman, uh, the penultimate Aquaman before the rebirth. Um, I've been really digging um, what this series since it started with uh, when the New 52 restarted a couple of years ago. And uh, this this issue just kind of continues delivering that same great stuff uh, that they've been doing. Um, they, they explore the origin of Deadwater, or at least more of who that character is and what it means to uh, what's been going on and threatening the the peace that Aquaman and Mera are trying to establish with their new, uh, what did they call it, Tidewater Basin or something like that. Whatever the, their new base is, uh, I probably said that wrong. Um, I'm trying to think of it. Their new, their new basically, uh, embassy uh, on the coast. Um, you know, everything's being threatened now. So they finally established, people are saying, okay, well, maybe we don't trust them, but we'll we'll see where this goes. So uh, it's just cool seeing seeing that, and I absolutely love Mara's new costume, which is basically, you know, a female version of the Aquaman costume. Same design and everything, it's just she's wearing it. Uh, and I love it. I think that's great for her. I was tired of the old green costume, which I know some of some people are, are probably cringing at, at my blasphemy for saying that, but I, I hated that green costume. So the, uh, the orange and green Aquaman similar costume is, is awesome. Loving it, and... Um, Great storytelling. Can't wait to see where this goes uh, in the last issue and what uh, Rebirth is going to bring for us. So, uh, Next up from Image, uh, Huck. I, I'll have to do some research. I think this might be the last issue of Huck, or at least the last issue of this arc. It uh, kind of concludes suddenly. Was not expecting us to wrap everything up, but uh, uh, picks up right where the last issue left off uh, with Huck and his mom trapped in the, the Russian science lab. And, you know, confronted with all of that. Again, I was not expecting it to wrap up so quick, but it's really good. I, I enjoyed it. It was a satisfying conclusion. It just, you know, was, uh, uh, I was expecting Huck to be an hour long TV show and ended up being a half hour long TV show. Um, if you, if you can get that, uh, comparison there. Second to last of my favorites for the week. Um, and I didn't say this at the beginning, but I'm kind of running down from the ones I liked the, not the least, but, uh, I build up to the ones I liked the most or was most impressed by. Um, so Huck was there, and now uh, Extraordinary X-Men, second chapter of their Apocalypse War story, set way in the future, and uh, it confirms that, um, I mean, it was shown in the last issue, so spoilers here, if you didn't read the last issue, be warned about what I'm about to say, and don't look until I put the comic down, you know, skip ahead or whatever, but uh, Colossus is definitely one of the four horsemen in this future. Um, he goes after the kids or he and the kids got separated at the beginning of this adventure and he is definitely one of apocalypse's four horsemen in this alternate future so 
All right, and last surprise issue. Um, was not really expecting this, but I thought I'd check it out. Uh, Joyride number one from Boom Comics. Um, it's exactly what the title describes. It is a joyride. This comic, it's about some teenagers uh, in the future, or young people. I'm not sure how old they're supposed to be exactly. I think they're teenagers. Uh, don't really understand everything that's going on in the world as far as why there's a giant steel metal structure built around the earth and why there's a gun built at the moon pointed at the earth. Um, but it's about these two kids who decide to escape. They want to get out and see what's out there. And uh, led by uh, the girl and then her buddy. Um, see, this is how much I liked it. I can't remember their names yet. Uh, I think his name's like Dude. D-E-W-D-E -E or something. It's, uh, yeah. And then her name. I'm going to, I'll look it up here real quick. Because I need to know. Uma. Uma. Uma and Dude. And then they team up with this soldier here or she's pursuing them uh, what's basically what they do is they sneak onto the moon i'm not going to give the rest of the story away it's fun it's a fun issue it's a great story it made me think of a modern sci-fi adventure of something in the likes of you know the classic 80s movies of like like goonies or uh you know it, you know ferris bueller's day off or you know even breakfast club not so much the setting and everything but just kind of the kids you know, out against the adults and, you know, them trying to just figure out who they are on their own. You know, definitely more Goonies, but stealing a spaceship and, and getting away into the galaxy kind of thing. So it's a lot of fun. Um, I had a blast reading it. Uh, the artwork is beautiful. Um, the coloring is fantastic. It's just, I mean, check that out. That's some great stuff going on there. Um, humor, action, fun. It was a joyride. It's exactly what it was. So uh, it's only a four-issue miniseries. So, um... Maybe we'll get a little more explanation or just see what's out there, but it is just, it is fun. It was fun, action-packed, and there you go. So there's my comic review for the week, April 20th, 2016. This is the Beardy, signing off, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.